Welcome to Authors of the Pacific Northwest, where we connect authors with new listeners and provide advice to aspiring authors on the business of writing. I'm your host, Vicki J. Carter. Hi there, listeners. Welcome back to the Authors of the Pacific Northwest, and we are continuing our discussion with Susan De Freitas, our collab- a collaborative editor and marketing consultant for Indigo Editing. So, Susan, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me. And so this week, we're going to talk about marketing. And um, since you're a marketing consultant, I'm very curious um, with what you have to say about marketing. So first, jumping into it, let me ask this question. Um, When an author, regardless if they're going to go traditional or self-publishing, what's the first thing they should think about um, when they're starting to write their book when it comes to the marketing aspect? When they're writing their book, gosh, you know, really, um, (laughs) I mean, you can think a little bit about marketing at the beginning of it, but the main thing in writing is just to, to write a book you believe in, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, you know, they get stymied, they get paralyzed with the idea of, of, um, writing to the market you know, chasing a trend or how it's going to fit in or, you know, it's not that that can't be useful to maybe bear in mind that like, oh yeah, my book's like a little bit like the lovely bones meets, you know, throw in another book that um, most people would recognize the name of. But, you know, for the most part, when you're writing, you should really just be focused on uh, writing a book that you believe in and that you will not tire of talking about <laughs> when the time comes, because that's what marketing is all about. You are really going to be at the center of your own um, publicity. Mm-hmm. So you, as the author, will wind up talking about this book until you're blue in the face. And if you have not written something that you really believe in, you're just going to get sick of it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm so glad that you started it out that way because I've heard so often in interviewing authors or talking to authors or publicists or anybody in the industry, and I hear a lot about writing towards an audience or picking your audience audience or making sure you're writing towards the trends. So I'm glad I like your refreshing approach to it because it can, it has um, made me stumble just a little bit and I had to clear my mind of that. No, I'm not going to think about any of the other stuff until the book's finished. <laughs> and then we'll oh, I'm so, I'm so glad to be able to be that voice here. You know, that is not to say that you shouldn't understand your genre. Mm-hmm. That is very important. If you're going to write a cozy mystery, you've got to hit all the notes of a cozy mystery. Mm-hmm. If you're going to write a romance, it's got to be satisfying to romance readers, mm-hmm. um, et cetera. But in terms of chasing trends, you know, it takes so long to write a book and it takes so long to publish a book that by the time your book goes to market, that trend is going to be long gone, you -hmm. know? So again, I really uh, just recommend that authors write something that they love, that they believe in. I love it. Fantastic. Well, fantastic advice getting us started on marketing. Um, Talking with a lot of authors on the podcast and off of the podcast, just personally, marketing tends to be one of the most overwhelming aspects for authors in this new time of the industry. Because a lot of it, it feels like it stems from the fact that regardless if you're doing an indie author, self-publishing, or you're going to work with a publishing company, you as the author really are going to be the person that drives your marketing um, more so than anywhere else. And and if that's true from your side of it, what, um, what's one point you can give to us um, that haven't started a marketing process or maybe um, somebody's already in the middle of it and, and they need a refresher tip? What's something you can suggest or what point of interest would be good for us to think about when we're going into the marketing aspect of our work? Well, I think probably the most valuable thing I can give you is a, and your listeners is a metaphor. Um, <laughs> <Like a metaphors. laughs> and, you know, this will be lost on, on perhaps on lifelong city dwellers and, and, you know, <laughs> maybe the younger segment of your listenership who has never tried to build a fire. But for those of you who 
who have built a fire in your life or tried to do so, that is really the metaphor that I use for marketing. You know, a lot of people get hung up on a certain strategy or just, it's all going to be about social media or, you know, if I don't get my book on Oprah, it's not going to be a success. And like, oh my goodness, I'm getting your book on Oprah. If that's a measure of success, I'm sorry. You're probably going to be disappointed. Um, but here is, you know, making a fire is something everybody can do, if, especially if you take the time to build it the right way. And if you have a great book that, again, that you love, that you believe in, that you've put the time and effort into making as good as you possibly can, you too can build a fire. You too can get attention to your book. You too can find your readership and find your raving fans, okay? But so the first part of this, and it's a sequential operation, right? Mm -hmm. Is that um, think about the people who are the most likely to drop everything and run out and buy a copy of your book. They are not strangers. Mm -hmm. They're the people who already know you. They're the people who already love you or at least think you're, you know, a, a decent coworker or an interesting person. They're the people who have some personal contact with you. Mm -hmm. So these are your friends, your relatives, your coworkers, the people you went to high school with, you know. Um, and, and thanks to um, social media and especially Facebook, a lot of us have um, contact with people from deep back in our past. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've maintained those loose connections. And guess what? Those are the people most likely to just want to buy your book because it's, it's a thrill to kind of know an author. A lot of people have an ambition to buy a, to uh, write a book and they never do. Um, and so it's, it's a big deal when somebody that they know has written one. And that is especially so if the subject matter touches on anything that you may have in common with them. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those people are your, are your paper. They are the most likely to catch fire. Um, and think about how are you reaching them? You know, a lot of people think, well, I'm just going to put the word out there on social media, but social media, that's like just floating something down a stream. Like, mm -hmm. you know, people, you, the people who want to know about this book and would love to get a copy of it, they may see your announcement and you, and they may not. And, and the worst thing to do is to take over your social media and think, okay, well, I got to make sure everybody sees it by just blathering on endlessly about your book mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Nobody likes that guy or that gal. So, you know, what's the solution? The solution is good old fashioned email. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first things I recommend um, my author, my marketing clients do is to compile an email list of practically everybody they know um, who, you know, through all these different spheres of their life, who might be interested in this book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you start by sending out um, an email, BCC'd, of course. You don't want anybody to get overwhelmed by the, all those reply alls. Exactly. Then you don't want to compromise the privacy of anyone's email address. So BCC, all those names. And you basically send out a friendly announcement that says, hey, look, there's this lifelong dream, you know, that I've, I'm about to fulfill. I wrote this book about X, Y, and Z. You're one of the people who's, you know, touched my life and been part of my journey. And um, I'd like to add you to my author email list um, to let you know when this book is out and it becomes available. Um, However, you, if you don't want to be on this list, no problem at all. Just mm -hmm. drop me a line, let me know, and I, I won't add you to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is how you begin an author email list, right? And again, that is the paper for your fire. So those people can do a lot of things, right? The ones who, who express the most enthusiasm, um, you know, those people can easily be recruited for your street team. And your street team is basically just your crew of people who are ride or die. They are going to, they're going to answer all of your, at least most of your um, requests mm -hmm. for things like, would you like an advanced reader copy um, in exchange for an honest uh, review mm -hmm. on Amazon or Goodreads? 
would you be willing to help to post on uh, social media on my pub day? Um, would you be willing to, you know, help get the word out about my launch party? Those street team people are extremely important because they are your first fans Mm -hmm. and their enthusiasm communicates to the people that they know, um, authority, you know, because as soon as it's not just you blathering on about how great your book is, um, more people are going to take it seriously. So that's, that's, those are some of the first steps that you want to take. So, um, you're probably wondering what the kindling is, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the kindling is your local media. Local media is always, uh, more likely to give you coverage than uh, state or national media, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that's your hometown newspaper. That's your, um, you know, that's the podcast that's, um, uh, produced out of, you know, your friend's studio or a a local um, TV show, morning show, Mm -hmm. you know, you can go down the list and think of, you know, what are my local media sources? And Mm -hmm. also, who is anybody that I may know who may have a contact, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A personal contact um, with a media source, we would count those as kindling too, Mm -hmm. because they're not just, you know, whether it's because you have a personal contact or because you're in the same community as the person you're pitching, it's not quite the same as cold, cold calling or cold pitching. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and those initial media placements, um, reviews, cover, you know, coverage, et cetera, it, it can do some important things for you. Number one, it gives you your first clips, Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. It shows that, um, you know, there's an angle, there's a story here. Um, it can give you actual, um, like sound bites from, uh, podcasts or radio shows. It can give you, um, you know, a uh, video footage that shows that, you know, how to talk to a host, mm-hmm. um, and appear in front of a camera. And those things are foundational to you as the author getting coverage from the next, uh, the, the, the next entity or the next quantity in your fire, which are those big logs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the analogy holds true in that paper burns very quickly, burns hot and quick, right? Uh-huh. Those people are going to buy your book, but it doesn't necessarily translate through to lots more sales. But um, if you can get that kindling going too, the combination of some good early sales and some good early coverage, you know, sets you up to catch one of those um, bigger logs on fire. And that, you know, is the sort of coverage that will burn hot for a long time and get a lot of people's attention. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you, you know, if it's a big book with a big splash and a a lot of um, marketing budget behind it, you know, that might be something huge like a review in the New York Times or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Or somebody who's um, coming more from a, a small press or in the author um, place and accompanying budget, that might be something more like, um, you know, a glowing Kirkus review or an a, a, a inclusion on a really fantastic list of famous and up and coming authors from say the biggest um, newspaper in your state Mm -hmm. to kind of quotes, you know, one, what one of those big things was for me as an author. Um, When my, I got written up in the Oregonian as one of 25 Oregon authors that every Oregonian must read. Right. So that's a log that's still burning for me as an author, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, So I could go on and on and on, obviously, but, but more than anything, I hope that this metaphor is clear Mm -hmm. to your authors and that um, to the, to the writers listening in um, and that it helps to give them a more realistic idea of how you get those big placements of how you get some of those big logs on fire, um, by, by starting small 
and um, getting that fire going. I absolutely love it because it's very similar to what I thought about with this podcast in the sense of how I was going to approach the podcast. I looked at it as a term I was like grassroots. You know, I was going to go real small and work slowly and just kind of start my way with people I know. And then we work through, you know, anybody I meet networking wise in my community and go from there. And it, and in the year it's been incredibly successful. And so, um, and so I thought I was going to approach it very similar when it comes to my own marketing for my books. And so you just confirmed <laughs> that for me um, in the sense that the fire analogy is fantastic. So I love it. I love that you, labeled each parts of the fire to give us a really great picture of how we can employ that. Um, there are a lot of people that, that say they want to help. I, I did have a little bit of a PR help at the very beginning of the podcast and it was very similar to what you're talking about. She worked with the local, um, newspapers in the Pacific Northwest and, Mm -hmm. and then was working from there up kind of a thing. So it's very interesting. Um, So where does social media fit in that fire? Because a lot of authors are being told or feel like from my, from my perception of what I've heard, especially independent authors, that they need to spend all the time on social media, which, which gets totally away from writing. It has it with me, but it also um, feels a little bit, like you said, too much, right? So where does that fit in that fire? Well, here's the thing is that, um, there's a right way to use social media and a wrong way to use social media. A lot of authors uh, use this phrase that I, I just, <laughs> I'll just say it. I hate it. I hate this phrase, shameless self-promotion. <laughs> and they use it for everything. Like, like, Oh, uh, just, just popping in here to let you know, like, I have a, my book launch is tonight at Powell's and I'd love to see you, you know, sorry for the shameless self-promotion. That's not a shameless self-promotion. <laughs> this is letting people know, like, come, like, do you expect them to be psychic? Yeah, exactly. How are they going to know otherwise? Yeah. You know, but people use it as if as making an announcement like that is in the same vein as like, uh, Today only, you know, $5 off my scintillating, you know, medical thriller, you know, get it while you still can, you know? Yeah. I guess that's, that actually is shameless self-promotion. Yeah. So let's just stick that, that ignoble badge where it is actually called for. Mm-hmm. It, it, it applies to that sort of ill use mm-hmm. of, um, of, of, tooting your own horn, I guess. But, you know, the right way to to use social media is A, to let people know, you know, is informational. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, when do you have your events? Um, You know, where, when is the, where is the book available? You know, um, is there a discount going for it? Basic things like that. Mm -hmm. The other things that people want on social media, they want to know some of the personal side Mm -hmm. behind your writing and publishing journey, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and some people aren't comfortable sharing that and that's totally valid. But if you are like, that's not shameless self-promotion. That's just being real Mm -hmm. about something that people are genuine and genuinely interested in. Um, And here's the other thing. One of the the best ways to use social media is to share endorsements and accolades from other people, Mm -hmm. especially um, those who have some standing in the writing and publishing world. Mm -hmm. Um, That's not to say that you can't use social media to share your glowing Amazon reviews. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. That's a great use of social media. But, you know, when you get your... um, your, your glowing reviews from like your industry reviews, your book blog uh, reviews, you know, when you have other people who are, are passionate readers um, and industry insiders saying good things about your book, you want, that's the sort of information you want to share on social media because it, um, 
it's a proof of concept. It's it. Uh, I'm, the phrase is escaping me here now, but it conveys confidence and authority, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Not just you going on about your book. So there are some elements of, yeah, you want a drip campaign on your social media rather than a barrage, right? If you got seven glowing reviews, you don't want to share them all in one day or all in one post, you know? (laughs) You want to keep it, you got to be, uh, selective and time everything it feels like and and consistent you know Um, but so many people you know they're like oh well um they're also the folks who are are just petrified of of shameless (laughs) self-promotion of any promotion being shameless self-promotion they um they think you know oh, I don't want to take up too much of people's time. I don't want to post too often. And, you know, there's a valid concern that way. You don't want to be just over and over and over the same person talking about the same thing. But um, at the same time, um, people understand that when you have a book coming out and when your book has come out, that's when the spotlight shines on you. Yeah, that's when you're going to step out on stage and you're going to talk, you're going to post more often than, than when you don't, when you're, you know, out there in the woodshed working on your book. Yeah. That's a mixed metaphor between, uh, <laughs> between music and, and writing. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess the equivalent of, of uh, expression for uh, writing is in your garret, right? Yes. Yeah. They understand that when you're, up in your attic, you know, <laughs> writing, you're not going to be posting every day. But yeah. when you come to the market with the new book, you know, you're going to be talking about it. You're going to be sharing about it. And um, you're going to be posting more often than at other times of the year. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm, I love it. I love it. Well, um, another thing that a lot of the authors have mentioned to me, and I wanted to get your take on this, because I feel like it is marketing. I feel like networking is very much similar to marketing. As long, you know, there's the pushy networking, the pushy face-to-face contacts versus, you know, this, the genuine, this is who I am and this is what I got going on, you know? Um, so can you talk a little bit about preparing how, um, for face-to-face, um, situations and as far as, um, marketing goes, cause I know a lot of my authors, they're constantly trying to find places to go and read and they're, or find places to participate. And some of them cost quite a bit of money, and they, I have had authors that I know and I've been with them because I wanted to see what they were doing. They would go and not sell a book, you know, and but they spend a lot of cost and time. So yeah. what do you take on face-to-face events? And are there any that you would suggest are better than others for authors to look for? Well, let me just maybe um, back up that question just a little bit, see if I can make it a little bit of a bigger tent. Um, Absolutely to in, include um, a little more um, uh, value, again, for, your, um, for the writers who may be listening in. Because this um, idea, you know, what you're getting at here about how to be genuine versus how to be pushy, I think it applies um, to more than just face-to-face interactions. Mm-hmm. Um, because as an author... Um, you know, you may or may not be handling the pitch, um, for a book review yourself. You may have a publicist who's, who will do that, but, but you will be the person reaching out to influencers, Mm -hmm. um, asking them if they'd be willing to read your book. And, you know, if you're doing it right, if you're taking chances, if you're going outside your comfort zone to, to really see if you can land this dream of yours, some of them will be people that you do not know, right? Mm-hmm. It will be a cold contact. So I think really the same um, principles apply when you are asking a complete stranger for, um, you know, review coverage you're, or you're asking them to read your book and if they like it, post to their people, to their mm-hmm. fans. Mm-hmm. Or if you're at, I mean, even at your little hometown book fair, you know, and folks are walking by, 
and you're asking them to buy your book, you know, whether or not you're stating that outright or not. And so the same principles sort of apply, you know, when you're reaching out for review coverage, what you're doing is you're only reaching out to people who you've done your research on um, their tastes as a reviewer. And you have a pretty good sense that they like the type of thing that you have written. Right. Mm -hmm. And in your first um, sentence in your cover letter, you know, you, what you need to do is establish that you've done that homework. You know what they like and you, and your book, uh, um, fits that pattern, fits along the lines. And that's why you're reaching out. It's the sort of, why are you talking to me? You know, yeah. Uh, You want to answer that question very quickly when you're pitching cold pitching, you know? Um, and when you're pitching an influencer, you know, sort of the same thing. If you have a, some sort of, um, warm contact already, maybe they're the friend of a friend or, you know, you want to bring that up first, but then also you want to demonstrate, you know, I love this about your work. And I think it has this in common with mine. You know, I understand that you're probably very busy, but you know, as a debut author, I have to do this. Would you be willing to read my book? And if, if, if you like it, um, you know, share something about it with your fans. And so how does that translate through to networking and to the, to you sitting at the little book fair behind the table, wondering if anybody else is going to stop by number one, you want to, you know, look friendly. It's it's nice to have something on your table if possible that invites people in, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but then the first thing you want to do is find out what the person's tastes are in books, you know, and if you've written a mystery and the person that you're talking to only reads romances, just have a conversation about books, wish them well and move on. Mm -hmm. I like that. (laughs) Only, you only want to, uh, to put the time and energy into sort of pitching your book to the people who like the sort of thing that you've written, you know, and you can only do that in person by asking questions and actually finding out who you're talking to before you launch into talking about you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes total great sense. And what I would have, what I was thinking um, when you were talking about that, um, a scenario in my mind of if the, if you are well enough in networking, you know, people around you, you know, other authors, that would be such an awesome gift to another author that maybe that person that you're talking to is not interested for me in historical fiction, but maybe they're very much interested in romance. And I have several romance authors that I know are good. I can turn them on to them. And that gives that person the gift. Absolutely. And that is, you know, so literary citizenship, you do it from dawn till dusk, it will come back to you when you need it other people will do that for you yeah I I, and I'm a sole believer in sharing and giving to everybody and you know being open in that respect and so um it's just it's just a really valuable conversation to have and I think it comes down to the genuineness that you know your work isn't going to probably um be everybody's favorite book, but you should be well enough versed in what's around you and people, you know, that you can recommend others, you know, works. Uh So very, very great advice. I love it. So let's touch a little bit back on what you talked about at the very beginning. One of the first things is a newsletter kind of list starting that out. How important, because I, I get both sides of this from a lot of, a lot of authors. How important is a, um, actual like newsletter that comes out regularly is is that something that you feel is important is it dependent on the individual author and there are people that might be listening to it that kind of a thing because it's time consuming to create another thing you have to get out <laughs> absolutely and it is the bane of many an author's existence um and you know a lot of business owners feel that same way but you know why do they all do it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It must be the reason they all do it. You know, um, it's because it is the number one way to sell books, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it is the, frankly, the only way, not only for you to keep track of fans of book one, 
you know, when you have book two coming out to let them specifically know, but it's the only way for fans of book one to find out when book two is going to come out. Yeah. Um, you know, unless they're constantly Googling you or something or, you know, your, your face is. I mean, yeah. So I think it's very important. Um, but this question of like how often your newsletter has to come out, um, that is very subjective and that varies by author. Um, I don't know if you, Vicki, are, are subscribed to author, various author newsletters. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I am too. And, you know, I see folks who do the regular newsletter thing well mm-hmm. uh, and they come out once a month. I, I will not subscribe to anybody who puts out an author newsletter more often than that when it's not around their book launch. Yeah, I agree. I, um, I, you know, I mean, really, that, we're interested I, in this author because of their books, not because yeah. of what they ate last night. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, that stuff is great when there's some when there's some real book news, but when there's not, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's gratuitous. Um, it's a waste of both the reader and the author's time. Um, you know, and so some people do that monthly newsletter. Well, I think, um, Fonda Lee, uh, uh, great speculative author based in Portland. I think she does a, a regular newsletter, author newsletter very well. Um, but you know, it is 100% okay with me. Um, if I never hear anything from that author, I love, unless they have a book coming out. Exactly. And an example of an author who does that is uh, George Saunders, you know, uh, the great short story writer, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and and he might break that um, pattern just a bit to let us know that his brilliant and awesome wife has just published a book. That's okay with me. That's fantastic. That's fine with me too. Cause if he's recommending it, then it's probably something I'm going to like if I like him. You know? But this guy is not just, you know, bothering with the busy work mm-hmm. of sending out bladder each month, you know, mm-hmm. and, and um, his, you know, as his fans, we don't want him to, we want him writing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. So, you know, as uh, both a, I'm an author and a, a freelance editor and book coach, marketing consultant, I've got a lot of things going on in book world in addition to being an author. Uh-huh. So, you know, I send out my newsletter once a quarter. Uh-huh. And in the course of that, I try to pack it with as much value as possible from like, you know, um, my book recommendations to recently published work that you can read online for free to, mm-hmm. you know, any classes that I may be teaching to, you know, I, I really do my best to just fill it with valuable information and just send it out once every, every three or four months. I like that idea. I, I actually have a podcast uh, newsletter every month because I like to preview what authors are coming out because a lot of people won't know what's going to come out unless they see the newsletter and go to the podcast. So for me, though, I was thinking about it as a writer. You know, I haven't, I, I obviously have, don't have a newsletter for the writing part of my life yet. I definitely have it down for the podcast, you know? So I was curious. I like the quarterly idea <laughs> because it's less time consuming. <laughs> Because <laughs> as you as you just mentioned, you know, as soon as you get your book completed and out and ready to go, I feel like you have to be prepared for there's going to be a lot of for you to get it out to readers. It's going to be some busy time going on. Yeah, you're going to be spending time not necessarily writing the next book, <laughs> um, but you're going to need to market, and that takes time. And I think that's where some of the frustration can be. I I remember very clearly, super early on. Um, about uh, two years ago, maybe three years ago, I was at a book um, reading and a very young author got up and shared his work. It was really, really good work. And then at the very end of it, he discussed how the book hasn't sold. It's been published and hasn't sold. And I just kept sitting in the back of my mind thinking, before I did a lot of research on becoming an, an author in this time frame, I'm like, well, what have you done <laughs> to get it? I mean, what are you doing? You're, it's not going to just sit there on Amazon and, and nobody's going to know about it, you know? So it really launched me into the idea that you have to be ready to 
kind of hustle that book out and get it out to people. So, so your advice is very good for those of us that are thinking about that, or if you're already in the middle of it, maybe you have some tip, uh, some thought from Susan that, Oh, I need to change a, B and C and see if that works. So, um, so Susan, let's wrap this up because I'm sure we could do probably 15 podcasts on every single one of these. Things. <laughs> I do know there's some great podcasts out there on it because I've listened to them. But let's wrap it up from your perspective as a marketing consultant. Can you give our listeners your number one top tip that you wish authors would know before they start their marketing journey of their book? You know, hmm, top tip. (laughs) Uh, You know, bear in mind the fire analogy. Do Mm -hmm. not discount the people you know as you're chasing after strangers <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because those people, especially the ones who become your street team, you know, they are the ones who will rave about it to all the people they know, you know, they really help to get the party started <laughs> to totally switch metaphors. Yeah. Um, I guess the number two thing is to realize that, um, yeah, you really are, you know, whether you have a big New York deal or you're, uh, you know, self-publishing your book, you are the person who stands um, in the, who sits in the driver's seat in Mm -hmm. terms of bringing attention to it. Um, And so be prepared to talk about it, you know, and be prepared if you're the kind of person who needs to really perfect your language Mm -hmm. you know before you speak in public do that Mm -hmm. get comfortable saying the same thing in different ways you know the great author um ursula k le guin you know she always came off as very off the cuff and witty when she was talking about her books but guess what she always said the same thing yeah Yeah. right she worked out her language before she stepped out in front of um interviewers you know, and, before, and audiences and in front of readings, you know, and then uh, kind of her foil is um, Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood's very off the cuff, you know, she comes off off the cuff and she is, you know, mm-hmm. but she's so comfortable in the frame of, 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 in the field, in the frame of reference of each of her books that, you know, every interview is a new adventure, and you're going to discover some fabulous new insight from the mind of Margaret Atwood. So that's two different approaches, two different types of intelligence, um, you know, about talking about your book. Um, so, you know, figure out which one works for you and then, you know, get prepared to step out into the spotlight. It's your 15 minutes of fame. It will be over quicker than you imagine. So, um, enjoy it <laughs> as much as you can. I love it. I love, love, love the fact of practice your language when you want to talk about it. I, I preach that to my students in my day job. And I do talk a lot about that with authors because everybody says, oh, you, you seem so comfortable getting up and talking about your book or even going on a podcast. Well, I wasn't comfortable for years talking in front of anybody, even on the phone. I had to practice it. <laughs> and so... And, and so that's great advice. Well, Susan, thank you so much for being here again this week and sharing with us your tips for marketing and um, listeners, especially those authors. I hope you uh, got some great things to uh, think about as far as marketing your new work. And we'll bring Susan back for next week. And we're going to talk, um, give, she's going to share with us some more tips. All right. Thank you for having me, Becky. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we did. Follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter where you can be entered automatically each month to win a signed free copy of a book from an author that's appeared on the podcast. You can find out more at our website, www.squishpin.com. And finally, if you're an author in the Pacific Northwest and you would like to appear on the show, you can find out more on our website. So until next week, I hope you enjoy the journey. This is Vicki J. Carter signing off.